Hey babes, Chad Lannis. I just want to provide my initial thoughts and reactions and insight and all that stuff regarding the Destiny 2 beta. This video will be covering PvP. I did record my first playthrough of the story mission and it was hype and funny and amazing and exciting and emotional. I loved it and I was so excited to provide that for you all, but XSplit kind of pooped his pants and it's just kind of corrupted the entire file. Not only that, but it's making my entire uh, streams terrible in my opinion it's because the webcam is all laggy and slow motion and stuff is weird. Um, but you all are amazing and I love you and deserve qu high quality content. So uh, scrap the story mission playthrough. I'll record another playthrough of it another time. And for live streams, I'm making a transition over to OBS Studio and hoping that that actually fixes all the issues. So if you did catch the live streams, I apologize for the uh, bad camera quality the past couple days, but I love you. I'll make sure that gets fixed up so you all can have an enjoyable streaming experience uh, once again. Anyway, getting back into Destiny PvP, uh, I initially hated it. I really didn't like it at first. Uh, I was really accustomed to how Destiny 1 is, where you can kind of just lone wolf and be aggressive and just make a play and just outspeed people and just outmaneuver and just like, hey, I'm just in your face and I beat you. Uh, you can still kind of do that to an extent on this game. If you manage to find a 1v1, you can just get that first shot and then land your shots and then boom, you beat the guy. But the radars is fairly in ambiguous. Um, the radar in Destiny 1 accustoms you to like pretty easily know if there's more than one person uh, based on like levels of how far away they are, etc. This radar in Destiny 2 is just kind of like a general bar uh, along the circular radar. Uh, it, you really can't tell if it's one or two or three or four people around the corner uh, that you're about to challenge. So being the first person to challenge a lane is not always the best option. You a lot of times want to be with your teammate regardless if you're going to be the first one or um, counter player around the lane or however you want to call it. Um, you don't want to be always by yourself uh, unless you have power ammo and or a super. If you're by yourself and you run into two or more people, you're, I'm going to go ahead and bet that you're going to lose. If I was a gambling man, I'd wager that you're going to lose on that exchange. Uh, the other players have to really choke their shots and really mess up uh, for you to not uh, die to them like instantly in a 2v1. Um, that or you had power ammo or special or super. I mean, um, that's just the only way you can just do one hit kills and kill people fast enough for it to like really matter for an outplay quickly against multiple enemies. Otherwise, they're just going to shoot you more than you can shoot them. And it's pretty slow, so it's not that hard for them to land enough shots to eventually beat you before you beat one guy and get out. Uh, plus, there's not that many dodge maneuvers unless you're like a hunter. Speaking of hunters, I feel like the hunter is a little bit weak regarding these objective-based game types because all they really have is the dodge move, which is really just a self-focused maneuver uh, that just helps yourself only and is not always useful, um, but you can definitely find it useful in many cases. I would admit that I failed to use it as often as I really should be able to, just because I'm not really used to having that dodge maneuver uh, used in the way that it's used. I'm more used to using shade set for like spamming abilities or using a shotgun and maneuvering around like melee uh, confrontations like that or just getting away. Um, but doing so on a blade dancer or gunslinger was very foreign for me and it felt awkward. Uh, so I'm going to be playing that a lot more on Hunter um, to really get a better feel for that and uh, hopefully make that more useful. In any case though, the Warlocks seem very powerful uh, for anything in PvP, just because if you're like chilling around the corner, about to peek a lane, just pop that healing rift, and then when you peek out, you shoot that guy, you get them weak, you get weak, you go back and heal faster than they do because they have slow recovery, which Destiny 2 has like a lot slower recovery overall feels than Destiny 1 does. I know gear is all wonky and whatever, but I still got like mid-tier recovery and it still felt slower than mid-tier recovery in Destiny 1. Or maybe I'm just drunk. I don't know. But that's kind of how it felt, at least, in the beta. Um, but having a healing rift, you'll heal a lot faster than the other guy does, so you'll win that um, battle of endurance or whatever you want to call it and eventually beat them out when they can't heal fast enough to keep up with you. Um, that helps your teammates as well. Your whole team can heal. So, awesome. That's pretty dope. And then the Titans feel really strong because those giant shields that they can just go up to a cap point, like this is Countdown, um, which is one of the two game types for beta. And you can just go to an attack objective, pop a shield after you like arm it or whatever. And if they ever like try to challenge you, then if they walk through the shield 
They take so much damage so fast. It's like a solar grenade on crack. It's insane. So if they challenge you through the shield, then you just like bop them once with a melee or something and they die. It's really like that fast. Um, so even if, and if you go to defuse, you can pop the shield as well. That guards like the half of the objective and the other half should be like your teammates. So that's basically guarded too, right? So it's just really powerful team play class abilities between the Titan and the Warlock. Um, so you help not only yourself, but your entire team as well. While the Hunter only helps yourself. So it, it feels like Warlocks and Titans are definitely more powerful uh, for these objective-based game types. We'll see about the non-objective game types where Hunters can just go out there and just slay people. Weapons I'm using is the Hand Cannon and Pulse Rifle, basically all the top players are using for the beta. Uh, the Hand Cannon, I forget the name of, but it's the only kinetic red and white Hand Cannon in the beta. So if you find that, great job. That's basically like a Palindrome or Ice Luna of the beta. Um, it four taps, but everything is slower uh, time to kill. So four tap is like basically a Destiny 2 version of a three tap, if you want to think about it that way. And the Pulse Rifle is the Nurgle, N-E-R-G-A-L, or Nurgal, or something like that. Um, it's a full auto Pulse Rifle. It's the uh, Void one. It's very good. It basically cross map like three or four bursts, like four bursts probably. But it's a very fast four burst, so it kind of feels like three sometimes. Um, it's really good loadout, so you can have a close to long range um, weapon set. And then otherwise, if you want to do something a little bit different, the scout rifle that, again, I forget the name of, I'm sorry, but it's a red and white scout rifle, and it's uh, semi-automatic, the only kinetic one that's of that type. And that is very good, four taps, cross map, so it's basically the hand cannon, except it's not really good for close range combat, really. Um, so for close range combat, covering that aspect of fighting, you can run like a sidearm, an SMG, or like um, the hand cannon in the energy slot. It's pretty good to have those loadouts. Uh, those are pretty much the best for time to kills and like reliability, etc. From what I've found, I'll still do plenty more testing because again, I've only played one day. Though it was close to 13 hours that we streamed through the beta, which was a lot of freaking fun. If you did come by that stream, thank you for coming by. I appreciate you. If you didn't, hey, I miss you. You should come by the next stream. I'll be streaming every single day. Uh, about 6 p.m. till midnight is usually what I usually do Eastern, but I'll be going basically uh, 10 to 12 hour streams for like this entire beta. I'm playing the crap out of it, mostly being PvP. Thoughts I have regarding the uh, shields. Shields, if I covered that already, I'm sorry. It's late. It's like 4 a.m., but I want to get this video out for you. I just finished the 13 hour stream, and my mom's birthday is tomorrow, so I only have time to do it tomorrow, and then I want to stream again. Um, but. The shields are like two to three times stronger than the uh, health. It's, it really threw me off. That's the biggest thing that threw me off when I started playing this game, um, PvP-wise, is I really had no like good grasp of how close I was to death and how close the enemy was to death. Um, but once your shields pop, you like instantly die from your red health. In Destiny 1, it was like a half and half system. Your shields were like 100 damage and your red health was about 100 damage as well. In Destiny 2, it feels like, I haven't tested it, but it feels like the shields are like 133 damage and then the red health is like 67 damage or whatever the other half would be. Um, so it's like not quite the same. It's a little bit stronger on the shield side. Um, so when your shields get down, get the heck out of there. You're not going to be able to last much longer. Maybe like one more shot. Um, if your shields are still up and the other guy's shields are down, you probably can finish them off before he can finish you. I'll be getting out more videos regarding the PvE uh, thoughts, more in-depth insight regarding PvP. I just want to do a brief, like, quick insight, overview, re initial reaction kind of video for you guys. I love your face. Thank you so much for being you. And thank you for watching. Audio, citizens.